we get to take the voices on the inside and put them on the outside. I don't do voices. Uh, I have background. Paul Fries was a guy I worked with a lot. Your inspiration. Yeah. It's kind of fun to find that on your, uh, your website. Uh, I had Paul Fries in once. I wanted him to do a crazy German scientist. And he stopped me. He said, Wally, I got work to do that does my regular voice tomorrow. I, I'm doing, he's at Disney. You can still hear him at uh, Disneyland in LA. Yeah. Uh, been gone for a long time, but he was the Pillsbury Doughboy later on. I have a story that relates to that for a second. I've done voices. I started out as an announcer in Chicago. I, uh, the first voice, I, character voice I ever did was a, the bunny graph. Now the bunny graph was a, a furry costume. Inside it was a guy with a camera, and he'd take pictures of your children. He went around the block. So I, uh, Seems legit. So I thought this would be a fascinating voice for the, I don't know, what do you call that? Adenoid. Adenoid, thank you very much. I don't have them anymore. But um, if it, an adenoid, it, you can subtract adenoid. <laughs> but. So that was the first interest in it. But basically I was an announcer with an occasional character voice. I came, uh, um, eventually ended up at Hanna-Barbera because I had been doing uh, direction of commercials using the Hanna-Barbera characters and a lot of the Kellogg characters, Sugar Pops, Pete, those things. Bill Hanna knew I could direct voices. He wanted me to start a commercial division. I couldn't get it going because uh, uh, art directors at ad agencies want very precious, very interesting, very intricate stuff. Fred Flintstone walking along in a headshot with his mouth flapping is not that fascinating. So I couldn't sell the commercial division of Hanna-Barbera for sour grapes. Uh, I said, hey, you've seen me voice direct, can I do shows? And I started doing it. One of the first ones I got was a, uh, a, uh, a Flintstones with Harvey Corman playing, what was the character? The Great Anybody? Gazoo. Who? Oh, yes, the Great Gazoo. Uh, that night his wife was going to have a baby and I remember him going to the phone to check at the hospital and I got him a cell of his character. Uh, those are great memories of contacts of people. You saw them once, maybe they were famous, maybe they weren't, maybe they became famous later. Um, uh, moments that, uh, going back to Pillsbury Doughboy, uh, that was Leo Burnett Company, had the Pillsbury. I was talking with a guy that uh, well, I'm, I'm, I'm mass backing the story. I'll back ass the story. Uh, I asked him about, I left Burnett and uh, went to Hanna-Barbera and I said, well, what happened after you uh, were working alone at Burnett? He said, well, I was promoted or rather moved over to the Pillsbury account. He said, one morning I was working at home preparing for a meeting and I had one of those little cylinders of dough and I cracked it open and that's a good voice, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, the dough came out and he said, I, you know, all know what stop motion is? Sometimes called stop action. It's not what it's called. It's called stop motion. Uh, claymation is stop motion. Uh, in any case, he said, that would make a great stop motion character. Well, obviously, the rest of the, the thing is history. The Pillsbury Doughboy is probably one of the most famous product symbols in the world, and it is Pillsbury's symbol, more, more important than the word Pillsbury. And he came up with this, and we got to talking about airplanes. I, I never learned to fly. But I've always been fascinated. I like to go up and look inside and look at the, and take a ride and hitch a ride and so on. I've done a lot of it. In any case, I said, you got into, you were flying? He said, yeah, I actually, uh, uh, after I became head of the television, you became head of the television department, Leo Burnett? Wow, what a job. Uh, he said, yeah, they were rewarded me rather. The Pillsbury thing kind of, kind of boosted me along. He said, uh, I said, you got into aviation. I said, what'd you have, a Cessna 152? That's a small two-passenger light plane. Uh, I thought, no, he'd say 172, that's a four-passenger Cessna. He said, no, I had a twin-engine Cessna. That's the kind of reward that they, Leo Burnett Company and most ad agents, give people who come up with the big ideas. A guy who did the Green Giant. I was at the recording session for Ho, Ho, Ho in Chicago. <laughs> Those are the great moments for a guy who's on the production side. Uh, people who are on the performing side have also the great moments. You're, you're being inspired by, uh, by Paul Fries. I worked with him. Um, uh, Danny Dark, you just mentioned, who's been gone, was uh, Superman in uh, 
uh, uh, what? Super Friends. Oh, that show too, yes, <laughs> in Super Friends. And I try to get Daddy to not go into a vibrato. He'd go up, up, and away. I said, you're not a tenor, an Italian tenor. You're, you're just a hero. Straighten, at least lose the vibrato, please. So that's, that's the side of the thing that's fascinating to me is working with the actors, and, and Danny never lost it. And I began to say, you know, this show's more fun if we camp it up a little bit. We had the, the, uh, the, 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 the Wonder Twins. One of them created water or was water and could do this, that, and the other thing. And every time we get through with a take on it, everybody go, oh God, this is awful. And that's what is funny about the show. And Joe Barbera thought we were doing an action adventure show with Superman and uh, Batman and all those characters. And I was having, not that I created it, it evolved into being kind of a, a camp funny show. And we knew that the, the super, the twins were silly and uh, we're making fun of the genre. And that evolved not because I said, hey, we need to do it, but because it was fun to do it, kind of do it sneakily. And I think Big Barbera began to say, you know, that's funny. <laughs> and we felt it was funny right from the words go. So that's, that's the production side of the great experiences. I had one more. Uh, what was it about Mike Bell? Mike Bell was kind of a, a shock, he still is a shock actor. He, like, he likes to say strange and exciting and a little bit like Howard Stern in the cartoon business. Uh, shocking language occasionally and a very funny guy, a very inventive guy. Um, that's that, that's the, the side of being on this side of the glass and once in a while stepping in I did uh, 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 jazz uh, uh, actor. Uh, Scatman Crothers. He's, he, he knows all the names, I, I don't. My whole function this weekend has been remembering names while he can't think of. <laughs> I pulled some names out this morning I didn't even remember. He and I sat and had dinner last night and spent 45 minutes of do you remember and what was his first name? What was his last name? Who are you talking about? <laughs> so it's, you're uh, lucky you missed it.